Hey YouTube, it's Zoe and welcome to day one of the Newt's Magical Readathon! Yay! I'm so excited! Yes, I did practice Hedwig's theme just for you. And no, this is not an older quarter from elementary school. I just bought this. I am going to become a pro at the recorder and all of you will bow to my musical prowess. I, oh my gosh. It's to go with my kazoo. And then I'm going to get some egg shakers and one of those hand drums that you go like this. I'm going to become a one person kindergarten band. <laughs> anyway, today is August 1st, day one of the Newt's Magical Readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. I'm going to include all of her information and her announcement video and all of the other things she's provided for this readathon down below. There's a lot of rules for this readathon. It's very in depth and that's why I love it so much, but I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. This is a month long readathon for the entirety of August in inspired by the Newt's exams at Hogwarts that they take in their seventh year. Back in April, she hosted the Owl's Magical Readathon, which is inspired by the fifth year exams. And I did that readathon. I vlogged the first three weeks of it. I couldn't continue vlogging because of personal reasons. But how you did during your Owl's exams will affect how you can go about your Newt's exams. So which classes you can take, which career you can go for, yes. There's a lot. Oh, but if you have not done the OWLS exams and you want to do the newts, you can. No big deal. You can do it. I just like the extra challenge of having my actions have consequences and making it feel even more real. So like I said, in these readathons, there are wizarding careers and G is so amazing, so detail oriented, very much a Harry Potter fan and I appreciate it so much because she made this whole pamphlet that I printed off on fake parchment paper. Look at this, there's a whole thing of wizarding careers. So you can be an Auror, you can be an herbologist or a healer, but the one that I am going for is I want to be an unspeakable and work in the Department of Mysteries at the Ministry of Magic. I think it sounds so much fun, like work in the prophecy room or with like the love potion or with the time turners, all of them are gone now. So pick a career that interests you. For this scenario, I'm going to choose Magizoologist because I'm on this page. But if you want to be a Magizoologist, in your OWLS exams, you had to complete four exams. And that means you had to fulfill or read four prompts. A book cannot count for more than one prompt, so you have to read four different books. But if you completed all of those prompts during the Owl's Magical Readathon, during the Newts, during this month, you have to get an O in Care of Magical Creatures, an E in Charms, and an E in Herbology. So yeah, to add even more complexity to this readathon, I'm really sorry if I'm losing you right now explaining this. Again, I will include all of the instructions and all of that down below. There are grades this time around. Here's a little sneak peek into my bullet journal spread, but because I want to be an unspeakable, I need to get O's in four different classes, which means I need to read 12 books. So there are different prompts for each class for each grade level, and you have to read them in order to level up. Example, I need to get an O in charms. So I need to, if I just want to get an A or an acceptable in charms, I need to read a book that you think has a gorgeous cover. If I want to get an E or an exceeds expectations, I need to read a comic slash graphic novel slash manga or book under 150 pages. And then finally, if I want to get an O or an outstanding, the highest grade, which you know I'm going to want to get, I need to read a paperback book, but you need to read them in order. You can't just read the book for O. Does that make sense? I really hope so. Oh my goodness. I know some people were interested in my bullet journal spread. So this is my like monthly calendar view. I kind of messed up on it. So I ended up turning it into a Marauder's Map looking thing with like footprints. And you know, I use some of that fake parchment paper to cover up my mistake. And then the next spread right here is all of the prompts for all of the classes. 
like I said before, I need to get O's in four different classes. I need to read at least 12 books. This was my completed bullet journal spread for the OWLS exams back in April. I needed to read a book for Charms, History of Magic, Potions, and Transfiguration, but I read 10 books, luckily, and I filled out my little potions bottles. Oh, I thought it was so cute, so I decided to do the same type of spread for newts. It's not as cute, but you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. I write down the books that I am reading for each prompt and I give it a color because right here, I like to track my daily page count. So back in April, here was my color coordination and this is what I read each day. And then I put the total number here. Each check mark is when I read a book and then that's the total page number and the total number of books I read during the month. Like last time, I really went overboard and I used coffee on a lot of these pages. Like this, I stained with coffee and then I burned the edges of the fake parchment paper and I learned a new font. Look at that. Whoa, that feels like a big accomplishment. Thank you for the applause that I'm sure you're giving me right now. It's nothing too special. I write down the books that I've hauled, either gotten from the library or that were sent to me or that I purchased myself right here. And then I have a sheet right here where I write down the title of all the books that I read, the rating that I gave it, genre, pages, the date that I read it. And there's more stuff in my bullet journal. I do like my daily planning in here too, but I'm not gonna show you that because a girl needs some secrets. <laughs> so with that all out of the way, I think it is time to share with you my TBR for this month. Like last time, I'm just going to sort all of the unread books on my shelves into each of the prompts for each of the classes and each of the grades for each of the classes. I'm going to do that right now because I don't like keeping a strict TBR. I am definitely a mood reader. And once I have selected a TBR for myself, it feels like a school assignment and I want to rebel against it. I don't want to read it if someone's telling me that I have to read it. If you see a book in the TBR that you really want me to read or you really hate it and you don't want me to read, you don't think I'll like at all, please let me know in the comments because I would like you to help me pick my TBR. So without any further ado, let's do this thing. that for Defense Against the Dark Arts, for E Exceeds Expectations, it is based off of Gilderoy Lockhart's Memory Charm. I love Gilderoy Lockhart. <laughs> so I need to pick the first book that I remember for my TBR, and I don't want to look at my TBR right now, even though I totally forgot what was on my TBR. What's on my TBR? I was just sorting all the books on my TBR. Oh, oh, the uh, Sorcery of Thorns by... Margaret Rogerson? That's a bookmarked book club book of the month for August, so it would make sense that I should read that in August. So that is my choice for Eve. <laughs> class to get an A and acceptable, I need to read a friend's favorite book. So I asked my besties, Hannah and Haley, if they would send me a clip where they recommend which book I should read this month. And so here, here they are. Hello Zoe's channel. I am Haley from the channel Haley and Bookland and my books for your newts readathon TBR. I have 
three of them because I had to pick three. I mean, one is very big and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, but I loved it. And two, you don't want to read it, but Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, because that's my brand and I can't really talk about my favorite books without mentioning something Alice. And then Numero Three is one that I think you're probably going to read. And that one is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. So I hope you pick one. Hi, Zoe. So a few of my favorite books that I recommend that you read are The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell, Circe by Madeline Miller, and Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And I know I've been telling you to read them for a really long time, so I hope that you finally read one of them because I know you'll love them. Thanks, Bibbies. I will read those, not all of them, because those are real chunky ones you chose for me. <laughs> Yes, this is a Tata pillow from BTS. You know BTS? I'm one of those girls. Sorry. Where I was filming earlier with my old white shelves in the background, that is my new office slash filming studio. We converted our garage into tiny little rooms and so that is my dedicated space to film. So I moved my desk that was in here into there and I moved my desktop and I moved all of my red books into there. I got rid of the shelves above my bed. Obviously you can see I still need to repaint that. A lot has happened in my living space but I have this little reading nook and I'm so at peace. I'm also so green right now. When did green become my favorite color? But I'm not a Slytherin, I swear. I'm a Ravenclaw. I did my nails Ravenclaw inspired, but it's copper and light blue, so I really failed, didn't I? So now that I've updated you on everything, I think it's time to pick our first book of the readathon. And to maintain some semblance of organization during this readathon, I think each week or each of my vlogs, I'm going to dedicate to a different class. So I think we're going to start with charms. What is A? for charms. I think that's to read a pretty book. I made, again, a whole Google Doc. I love Google Docs. I love organization. Um, but then I show you this bookshelf. <laughs> what is this? But I think that the first book that I want to read for my pretty book is With the Fire on Heim by Elizabeth Acevedo. I read The Poet X last month and I really enjoyed it. That is written in poetry. Well, this is written in prose. It is more of a regular novel and it tells a story of a teen mom who loves to cook and I think there's some magical realism in here where her food is magic I'm not really sure but is this not the most gorgeous book you've ever seen with your eyes hold on I don't think you understand how gorgeous it is oh buddy it's a shiny hardcover covered in fruit <laughs> I love it whoever made this I love you I will marry you <laughs> if you want I mean <laughs> so here is my office space it's really nothing fancy I have all of my filming stuff right here and then my two shelves here yes I have one shelf that is completely empty right now but I'm going to obviously put some more red books on there really soon because I haven't put all of my books that I read in July there yet anyway I came in here to get a bookmark. I like matching my bookmarks to my current read. There's this Monet bookmark that I got from the MoMA in New York, but that doesn't really go. Does this go? No, it doesn't. I think I'm going to use my Luna bookmark because 
She looks so happy on this book. They kind of go together in a way. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stop overthinking this and I'm going to start overthinking which color I should use for color coding in my bullet journal. I have my Crayola Super Tips, but the question is, for this book, do we pick the color based on the dust jacket or based on this beautiful orange? And there are multiple shades of orange. Mmm, dilemmas, dilemmas. Actually, let's see which color I have used recently because I don't like using the same color all the time. So we're going to look at my review notebook where I put all of the books that I've read this year. So I have used a darker orange recently. I have this. This kind of goes together. Doesn't go with this, but it goes with this-ish. And I haven't used that recently. I just hit myself. So I'm just going to put down with a fire on high with the color coding on my currently reading page. I've only been reading for like an hour and I'm already 70 pages into with the fire on high i think it's been a little bit more than an hour but still this is such a quick read and i'm really hungry now <laughs> the way that she describes food in this oh goodness anyway i think that i really want to do an instagram live read in which is where you do an instagram live and you read and then other people join and read with you i did one the last day of the reading rush with Haley. i didn't participate in the reading rush because i was prepping for the newts and i didn't want to do too many readathons back to back i think i'm going to go read with some other people to kick off the newts. Also, probably grab a snack. Say hello to the vlog. What's up? We're gonna read together. Oh, hi! Hello. Hi, I'm also here. <laughs> So I'm done with the Instagram live reading. My dad is home from work. He's currently listening to, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get copyright. Yeah, careful. Copyright. Copyright claims. Yes, Crooked Kingdom on audio, plus I'm reading uh, the second of the uh, Jesper Ford books as well. I'm not currently reading anything. I don't know how to read. What up, I'm Jared, I'm 19, and I never fucking learned how to read. You're in a readathon. I got stuff to do. Like what? Play Minecraft a lot. So we are going to go get tacos and then we're going grocery shopping. And that's my life. Bye. <laughs> Work the body. <laughs> oh. Delicious. <laughs> The wall oh my gosh I feel like I'm in that somebody I used to know video dun 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 it is 10 30 and I am on page 244 of with the fire on high I've already cried three well I've, I haven't like full-on cried I, I've teared up three times while reading this and it's not sad I really like our main character Himani is so hardworking and she cares about her little baby Emma so much. Malachi? Don't even get me started. The most wholesome love interest I have read in a while. Imani found a good boy. <laughs> Imani is so likable. She is instantly like I am on her side and I want her to succeed and it's not like she's a Mary Sue. She does have flaws. She's struggling so much saving up for her culinary classes trip to Spain and things aren't going her way but then things start going her way and I was just <laughs> I love how food is described in here. I really feel like I can smell it and taste it and wow. Anyway, as you can see, I am doing a face mask. I am using Cosmetic Warrior from Lush. This one has full chunks of garlic in it. So I smell great right now. Luckily, YouTube is not smell-o-vision because I am warding off all of the vampires, but I had to use this because I've been breaking out like crazy lately. I mean, I probably know the cause of it because 
I've been crying nonstop. I've been eating a lot of chocolate. I've been breaking out. Hmm, all of you whose cycles are controlled by the moon know what I'm talking about. And yes, I'm talking to all of you fellow werewolves out there. So I'm feeling great, I'm looking great, and I'm going to keep on reading while my face mask dries and go to bed because I'm really trying to practice self-care this month. Usually when I do readathons, I kind of let my self-care fall to the wayside and that is sometimes why I'm not able to finish doing vlogs. Hello, it is day two, Friday, August 2nd, and it just finished raining, so it's actually cooler than normal outside, and I won't die if I sit outside and read. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I am on page 292 of With the Fire on High. I'm definitely going to be able to finish it today because I only have 90 pages left of it. I have a little lizard friend. Hello, buddy. I am deathly afraid of snakes of all sizes. It can be a tiny little garden snake and I will freak out what lizards totally fine with because they have legs. So comment down below your greatest fears. Mine are snakes and dying alone without having done anything with my life. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> just went out. <laughs> Did you see that? Love living in Florida. I am six pages from the end and I'm really trying not to cry um but it's just it's so sweet. Oh gosh no it's welling over. Nope nope nope. It is day two and I've already finished my first book of the readathon. I am very proud of myself. This is definitely a four star book. I had a lot of fun reading it and I really connected with the characters but there wasn't a lot going on. Most of this was Amani trying to figure out what she wants to do after high school graduation, juggling her family's finances and her young daughter and just not knowing what she wants to do with her future. So a lot of this was internal dialogue and I didn't mind it. It just made the story drag a little bit. Also, some parts of the plot I couldn't believe. Like they went on a trip overseas a bunch of high schoolers going overseas and there weren't any parent chaperones. <laughs> and so they were just like gallivanting around the city and that would never happen in real life. But that's just a really small nitpick. It didn't actually make me drop the rating at all, but still I was reading it going, but I am happy that I read this. I will definitely be picking more of her books up in the future. I also just got a package in the mail and I, I did not know this was coming. I have never read any Nora Roberts before. So here's what's inside. It smells really good. I'm guessing, oh, right here, there is a bath bomb. I will definitely be using this during the readathon because you know, oh my gosh. It's been raining all day. Can you hear that? And then we have this mysterious box. Oh, it's a candle! It's a prosperity candle that supports women refugees and artisans through candle making. That is amazing! And it's a woodwick candle! Oh my gosh, I am so excited about this because I've always wanted to try woodwick. Apparently, when you light it, it crackles a little bit. We should probably look at the book. That was the whole purpose of this package. It is Undercurrents by Nora Roberts. I love the cover, love the tones. It says it's a story about family loss and healing and how family can both harm and heal. And thank 
thank you. St. Martin's Press is who sent it to me, so thank you. But now it is time to pick our next book to read. And for charms to get and exceed expectations, I need to read a graphic novel comic book under 150 pages. And I know exactly which one I want to read. I'm gonna go run and get it. I want to read The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This looks like one of those little golden books. Did you ever read those as a kid? I loved the Pokey Puppy. Was that the name of the one? It is so cute. Look at that little dragon. Oh my goodness. It looks so cozy and since it is still thunderstorming outside, I think now is the perfect time to curl up with some tea <laughs> and a blanket and read this. I feel like I'm being hypnotized. I have my chai, which I accidentally put way too much milk into, so that's unfortunate. I already love this first page. Is this going to be too cute? I think it is. I don't think I'm gonna be able to handle it. Why am I crying again? <laughs> I need to get a grip. But this was the cutest graphic novel I think I have ever read. It is up there with The Prince and the Dressmaker. Both of them are so cute and so wholesome and I feel so happy after reading them. This was only 72 pages long. I think that's what Goodreads said, but there was so much story jam-packed in here when we got like a flashback of two characters. Oh my gosh, their relationship is just like... <laughs> I absolutely love the art style. The little tea dragons look like the softest of Pokemon and I want one so badly. At the end, there is this little handbook for the different tea dragons and it lets you know like their uh, care notes and their little special abilities, their temperament. And I love chamomile so much. I love all of them. I would gladly have any of them. Look at hibiscus. Oh my gosh. Is there a sequel to this? because I really hope so. I loved this. This is easily a five out of five star book. This is not so cute. Look at him. But now I finished my graphic novel. So I already have an E in charms. I already finished two books. I really enjoyed both of them. So yay me. Yay me. Now, what is the next prompt? Oh, it's to read a paperback book because of the spell Spongify. I have so many paperback books. I prefer paperback over hardcover. Which one do I choose? I'll do a try a chapter. So I'm going to pick three and read the first chapter of all of them and see which one speaks to me. That sounds like fun. Okay. Also, I keep looking down. So here is my TBR. I think the first book that I want to try out is, ooh, Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. I haven't read any Ruta Sepetis yet, and I've heard nothing but good things. Also, I'm in a historical fiction mood, so here's the first one. Well, since I just said I'm in a historical fiction mood, here's another historical fiction next year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. And do we have another one here? We have The Nightingale, which Haley really wants me to read. It is over 500 pages, but why not try this one out too? So here are the three historical fiction books that I'm going to read a chapter of. Hi, you look very comfortable on camera. <laughs> Please pick just from based on the cover, which based one on should I read first? Um, the third one. Okay. The one that looks like Paris. Oh, I think this is what? Paris, Havana, <laughs> and something else. So I finished the first chapter of The Nightingale and I'm sad. I know this follows two sisters in France during the German occupation during World War II, but I'm not sure whose perspective we start with because it is a woman as an old lady 
who's dying. So we don't know which sister it is. I have many questions. This is definitely a possibility. I do think that I want to read this. If not now, then maybe I'll finally listen to Haley and read it as her recommendation. Now I think I'm going to read the first chapter of Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. I have started this before. I read the first 50 pages or so two months ago, I believe, and I really liked it, but I wasn't in the mood to read historical fiction, but I was enjoying myself. It was a good book overall, so I'm going to reread the first chapter and see what I think of it. I really like how this book starts. It follows two perspectives, the first being the daughter of a sugar baron who is living in Havana, Cuba in 1958 during the Cuban Revolution, I believe, and she lives a very privileged life away from all of the political unrest. But then she meets a revolutionary and her eyes are open to all of the realities of where she lives. And the second perspective is her granddaughter who grew up in Miami and has never been to Cuba until 2017 after her grandmother has died and she visits to learn more about her grandmother's upbringing and learns the secrets of her family. I did like The Nightingale more than this, <laughs> but we'll see what happens with Salt to the Sea, which is like, whoa, all that just fell. <laughs> we'll see with this book. I actually need to go eat dinner right now, so I'm going to read the first chapter. Okay, so I read all three chapters. This one was only two pages long, but honestly, out of all three of these, I think it was the most interesting because I have no idea what's going on. I did not read the back of this book, so I don't know what the premise of it is. I'm guessing there is a C. I think this is the one that I'm going to continue with. It just really captivated me and I'm very intrigued and also I really want to read some Ruta Sepetis. This was also my first instinct when I was looking for books to try a chapter of so maybe I should have just read this the whole time. Hello! Hello! I was just playing her my beautiful tunes. Um, Did you like the serenade I gave you with my recorder? <laughs> Thanks! I'm really gonna refine Hedwig's theme. And I'm going to be, when they reboot those movies, who are they gonna call for the theme song? Not you. Not you, but me. They will call me. <laughs> what are you playing, my heart? So we're having a little reading date. What are you going to read? I am going to read The Fountains of Silence by Brutus of Hedys. Oh my gosh, we're gonna read some Ruta Sepetis together. Yeah, yeah. Get you a friend who will make fun of you trying really hard and then read with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Get you a friend who breaks you down then builds you up. <laughs> That's me. That's what I'm here for. You're welcome. <laughs> so we are redoing our floors on our back porch. So how many pieces are we missing? After 11 boxes, we are one... Uh, one, piece one piece of these short. This is what I've been doing all morning and it looks real nice. Sunday. I didn't really vlog yesterday at all. Did I even vlog at all? I have no idea. But weekends are usually reserved for helping around the house and we were doing a lot of house renovation things this weekend. I helped with the floors and other things today. So didn't get a lot of reading done, but I did read about 50 pages of Salt to the Sea. My opinions on certain characters have definitely changed a lot from page 50 to page 100, especially Alfred. He's um, a Nazi and <laughs> I thought his storyline was going to go in one direction, but as I get to know him more, nope, it's going in another direction and I hate him. If you've read You by Caroline Kepnes, 
he writes letters in his head to somebody and it reminds me a lot of you which is bad because in you he's like stalking this girl and saying creepy things and i'm getting a lot of those vibes from alfred and i feel gross but all in all i am really enjoying this i am currently on page 210. this is such an interesting historical fiction book because it takes place during the end of World War II, but it doesn't follow characters from the allied countries like America or France or England. That's about half of the historical books that take place around World War II. They take place in those countries or they take place on the war front in Germany, but this takes place in East Prussia. They are trying to flee from the Russians coming in and invading, so it's just I have not seen this perspective and it feels like I'm reading about an entirely different war that I've never heard of before because I'm really seeing an entirely different scenario. All of the four main characters, because it follows four different perspectives, all of them are from different countries. So we have one character from East Prussia, one from Lithuania, one from Poland, and one from Germany. You see how they ended up in this situation having to flee and all of the baggage that they are carrying with them and how much damage and chaos this war has caused for people not even fighting the wars. And I, I, I can spend so much time gushing about this, but I'm only like halfway through. It's only 3.15 p.m. So I think I can finish this today. I really want to because I need to know what happens on the ship. I am very scared. <laughs> I love three of the four characters and I don't want anything to happen to them. But I have also been listening to BTS all this morning as I read. Usually I don't listen to music when I read because I don't like lyrics because I get distracted. But because they're singing mostly in Korean and I do not speak Korean, I can handle it when I read, which is really nice. And their music just puts me in a really calm mood, especially microcosmos and epiphany and spring day it's just the, the perfect vibe for reading this book right now i'm feeling very sad because of this book and all the terrible things that are happening but bts is there to make sure i don't get too sad yesterday i also spent a couple of hours facetiming hannah and we were putting together a photo wall for her and i actually <laughs> i bought a jungkook barbie doll and i'm sending it to her <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, I don't know what you're going to do with a Barbie doll, but one of us needed one and it had to be you. You deserve it. <laughs> I also sent her a copy of the Tea Dragon Society because I need her to read it. But while I was talking to her, I was also partaking in the Magical Readathon trivia challenge on Twitter and I won. I feel pretty good about myself. Finally able to help out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just finished Salt to the Sea. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, uh, that was an experience. And it was, uh, it was a good book. I recommend it. Yep. That's the end. <laughs> so it is a couple of hours later. I'm obviously about to go to bed and I am all cried out from the last couple of days. Oh my goodness. But honestly, is that new? No, it's not. So I'm going to wrap up the vlog and the reading right here, but let's talk about what I read in the past couple of days. I finished three books. I finished Charms class and I read good books. I have enjoyed everything that I've read so far. The first thing that I read, obviously, was With a Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I know I said when I finished this that this was a solid four out of five star book, but after further reflection, I think I would give it a 3.5 out of five star. I had an enjoyable time reading this, but thinking about it, nothing really happened. There was no action driving the plot forward. There was a big event that things were leading up to, but when that happened, 
It was anticlimactic. I do like the characters in it though, and I will read more Elizabeth Acevedo in the future. I still recommend this if you enjoy The Poet X. And then I read my favorite book so far, and that was The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. I still give this a five out of five star. There is going to be a sequel called The Tea Dragon Festival that comes out in September, I believe, and I really want to pre-order it because <laughs> I'm just obsessed with this. I don't really know why. It's just so charming and it makes me feel so warm and cozy and everything about it makes me happy. Apparently there is also a card game. I really want a plushie of one of the tea dragons. Personally, I think hibiscus and I we would be very compatible. I read all of the different tea dragon bios and hibiscus is extremely sociable, loves to eat and share food with their owners. They will bring food to their owners and they are the second most easygoing after chamomile. But chamomile sleeps all the time, which would be really cute and be easy to take care of. But hibiscus, I mean getting food from a little tiny Pokemon looking dragon. Oh my gosh. See, I'm talking about this like I'm actually going to get one. <laughs> okay, and then the last one that I read, obviously I just finished and there are still residual tears in my eyes, but that was Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. I think I would give this a 4.5 out of 5 star. I think the only problem with this is that it was told from four perspectives and there were very short chapters. So sometimes the chapters would only be two pages or a single page or a single sentence long. So I had a hard time really connecting to each of the characters. I mean, I didn't want to connect with Alfred, so. <laughs> but I wanted to really, truly care about them and truly know them. It was a really enjoyable and really fascinating read. I read in the back, there are interviews, transcripts from some of the interviews that Ruta Sepetis had. There was one where she interviewed a diver who dove into the Baltic Sea to see the remnants of Wilhelm Gustloff and how it's still preserved. In the author's note, she talks about her research process and the years of research and interviews and everything that went into it and it was so interesting. So I definitely want to read more of her books in the future. I particularly want to read Out of the Easy, I believe, which follows someone who lives in New Orleans. I don't really know much about it, but I want to read more historical fiction that's not about World War II because I feel like there's so many World War II stories out there. And this was really interesting because it was told from a different perspective and it doesn't follow the usual storyline of a World War II historical fiction book. I really like her writing style and I'm happy that I finally read this after years of people telling me to read this. All in all, I had a really good couple of reading days and it's given me a lot of momentum for the rest of the month. Before we go, I'm going to give you a little flip through of my updated bullet journal because I know I like to see that and you can see some of my progress so far. Like this is the total number of pages that I've read. Let me know if you're participating in the notes and how your reading is going so far. Thanks for hanging out with me for the first four days of the Newt's Magical Readathon, and I can't wait to hang out with you next week. Bye!